All right, let's do the second part of the video. I'm rotating the, the volume around the y-axis. So if I know that y equals 4x, y equals x squared. And in my last video, I found the boundary conditions for x, or the, like from like integrating from 0 to 4. So I know that these two functions intersect at the point x equals 4. So y equals 4 squared, that's 16. y equals 4 times, so that's 16. That means that this point here is 16. That's great, man. I already know my boundary conditions for y now. So now I can literally just integrate the function. So pi times volume is equal to pi times the integral of 0 to 16. And it's the opposite this time. So I go from the y-axis and I go perpendicular to it, which is a fancy way of, you know, saying, all right, let's go straight from this way. So the first function I touch is x squared. And the second function I tuck is touch and tuck is 4x this time, which means that when I take my integral, it's going to be x squared. Oh, no, sorry, it's not x squared. I'm so sorry, because this time I'm integrating with respect to y, yeah? So I need to solve for x. So x is equal to y over 4, and x is equal to square root of y. So y equals x squared, x equals square root of y y equals 4x, x equals y on 4, which means that it's the square root of y squared minus y over 4 squared dy. I am so used to integrating with respect to x. That was the silliest mistake I've ever made in my entire life. I'm so sorry, but I caught it. I caught it. So let's find out. So volume is equal to pi times the integral from 0 to 16 of y minus y squared over 16 dy. And then that means that the volume is equal to pi r uh, 1 half y squared um, 16, 32, 48. So this is y cubed over 48 from 0 to 16. That's annoying, but thank gosh there's a zero here because now I, I can literally disregard the second half of the equation and just plug in 16 and solve for the volume. So the volume is equal to pi. Now let's get my trusty calculator out again. So 1 over 2. Far out, dude. How how's everything going, by the way, fellas? Um, 16 squared. I believe that's 256, but... My math is 16 times 16. Yeah, I think so. Um, y cubed over 48. So 16 cubed over 48. All right, so that is the... This should give me... All right, cool. And that's 128 over 3. And therefore, the volume is equal to 128 pi on 3. Remember... Um, yeah, dude, um, if you don't have a pi in your answer, that means you've probably done something wrong, man. So, yep, this is my part two to my volumes revolution, and this time I rotated it around the y-axis, and I showed how to find the boundary conditions. What I did is that I recognized that in my last video that I found that 4 was an intersection point on the x-axis where both the y-coordinates meet, so I already know what the y-value is going to be by just plugging in the x-value for each of the functions, yeah? And then I solved for x, so I knew what function to integrate with respect to. I almost made the state mistake of writing x squared dy, but that's wrong. Because if you've got boundary conditions from 0 to 16, that means you're integrating from the y-axis, not the x-axis. But that's the answer, and that's how you uh, do volumes of revolution. Reintegrating with respect to y. Bye-bye. That rhymed, dude. That was sick. Um, so, yeah, I've got uh, two subscriber celebration. <laughs> They're from my friends, though. So, yeah. Um... I should come up with a really funny way to say goodbye in my videos. But yeah, peace out, my homies, once again. Yep.